Well, welcome back to Mr. Obsolete's Vintage Homesteading. Today we're going to be doing a number of things. Back behind me here, you can see some of these big trees, and there's a couple of small dead ones to the fore forefront of them. So I'll need to take those out here pretty soon. And then I get some leaners and just a bunch of dead stuff. So we're going to go back there and take out a bunch of little saplings and stuff first, and then we get a tree to drop back there and then we're going to branch a tree that we chopped down with an axe here a couple of videos ago and then we're also going to be burning these trash piles here we're planning to get a little break this rain is straight for over a week we've got somewhere around 10 or 12 inches of rain but anyway for cutting the saplings we're going to be using these <coughs> and uh, these were I have had these probably about 35 years. They're made by Sandvik. You know, and it's just disgusting. All the new stuff is all made in China. This stuff is made in France, but it has really top-notch steel. I rarely ever have to sharpen it. Handles are super strong. You know, I've got other brands that are newer, but they won't do the job this one does. But anyway, onward and downward. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to start cutting these out here. Got our favorite little neighbor's dogs barking at us. See how nice and smooth it is. Takes no effort to cut this stuff out. So much better than the new cheap stuff. cleared out of the way and move further down the trail. Okay, well we're gonna cut this and get it out of the way. And this little tree right here we're gonna take out. Once I get it cleared out, I'm gonna drop this tree here. But uh, one of the other things we're gonna be doing, not on this video, but all these bigger trees have all these dead branches down at the bottom over here and back over here. Yeah, I'll bring a ladder out and get those cleaned off up to about 15 feet or so. Open it up in here. All right, well, we'll get this cut off here. Get branches all over here. Yeah, because eventually we want to take most of the trees out of here because they're all in really bad shape, except for a few of the big ones. And anyway, we'll be right back with the saw. Well, we've got the saw, but the first thing I'm going to do before I drop the tree, I'm going to branch this and use my little plumb double bit here. The one I usually use is my single bit Evans, Evansville, but I like to go through my stuff, you know, the saws, I like to use one on each different video if I can, and different axes, so Let's see how it goes here. Well, that works lick. It's a nice axe.
anyway we'll get this branched and we'll be back okay well we got this tree to take out you get this small one over here first and so I have a room to cut around it in case something happens so I can get away when it drops and today we'll be using our little 1979 partner S55 55cc and this is a farm saw that I've talked about in other videos but one thing I really like about this is it's really powerful it's 3.4 horsepower which is a lot more than a lot of other saws at the time had it has a built-in governor and a carburetor so it runs at 8500 and the only thing I don't like about it since it's a non-professional motor it doesn't have a sight line on it for dropping the tree so I'm gonna have to guess now this tree is leaning this way a little bit more to this way here so I'm gonna try and drop it in right on top of that little white tree right there if I can so what I'm doing is I'm practicing on smaller trees I didn't do much tree cutting this summer and get rusty and so I need to hone my skills I got two big trees that are over a hundred foot tall and I have a limited area to drop them in so get my skill set working better so anyway we'll get the saw warmed up and be back Clear some of these slick branches out of the way so I don't slip and fall and be right back. Well, that was 100% right on, right on top of that tree. Must have a little water or something in the fuel on the saw, it's starting to act up a little bit, but well, I'll cut this up into pieces and we'll come back and cut this one here too.
happy the way that tree came down. Got it bucked up. I got a little bit more through down there, but when I was walking, you notice I shut the saw off. The reason for that is all these dead branches and slick stuff. It's really easy to go flying when you're not suspecting it. So you don't want a running saw when you're doing that. Anyway, we'll cut off the last part of this. And that'll be our fun and finish day today. take a look at this wood here show you how it broke off here I chopped it down with an axe so anyway it's kind of interesting how it pulled out okay like I say we chopped this down with the axe and you can see the hold, holding wood here uh, the tree was still alive but barely but it broke off really nicely here but there was this piece here that folded over but it still dropped right where we wanted it to, but that's kind of unusual to see it like that. And plus that split out here, it broke here too. You can't pull it out that far, but... Yeah, now you can see a little bit of sap in here. But very little. Like I said, it's pretty much dead. So anyway, there you are.